Now back in camp, right beside of our, right, right next door neighbors to us, here's some, here's some kids that's got a pet raccoon. And they're trying to get that raccoon to hold still so I can get a picture of him. But that raccoon doesn't want to hold still. He's, he's, he's like a, well, like a baby would be who's crying wanted their bottle, and that's what he wants. He wants his bottle. He says, I want my bottle, I want my bottle. But he's got a different way of telling it. He's just squirming and this, <laughs> scratching and scratching. They can't hold him still. He says, get your face around, sir, and you can see, get a picture of you. And you watch him, man, if they get the bottle, he'll quiet right down. He'll be really okay then. <laughs> there he is. That's what he wanted. Now we can get a good picture of him. Isn't he pretty? Isn't he cute? Boy, the wonderful things that God has created for us to have for pets, dogs and cats, kittens, raccoons, oh, any number of things that you can think of that are, <laughs> that are fun to have and fun to deal with. Horses, calves. Isn't that wonderful? Those things are important. All those things are important to us. And we are, but we are the most important thing that God has made. We're the most <laughs> beloved of what he's made. Here, look, here's something else that God made. See those uh, ducks? There's a family of ducks. Now, God knew what he was doing when he made families, even in not only the human family, but he made families, duck families, and he made chicken families, and he made those ducks, they just, not, they're going down to a feeding ground just beyond the swimming area there. And they stay in close to the swimmers. They're not afraid to swim or swimmers, but they're smart enough to stay away from those skiers out there. They, <coughs> yes, they know by experience that they wouldn't want to get out there where those guys are skiing. They'd run into them and hurt them. That looks like a, a lady, a woman, a girl. I can't be sure, but... Just guesswork. You can guess as well as I can. <laughs> if I call them a he or a she, why, you, you make up your own mind. But they, <laughs> they're really pretty good. I know I did some ski. Look at that one, scoot around. They're on one ski. I never skied on one ski, but I skied on two skis a couple of times. Two times in my life I've had a chance to ski. And, uh, oh, that guy, he was good, but he wiped out, didn't he? He took a corner too short. Now here's a family, a little girl still out swimming, the others have been swimming, I guess, and they're trying to get up and get their slippers on without getting sand stick to their feet. <laughs> and look at that family, that family of swans. They've been down to the feeding grounds and they're headed back now to, to the river where they stay overnight. And look at there, five little ones and, and Papa in front and Mama in the back, just going along. Isn't that sweet? Isn't that nice? Just look at that wonderful... Oh, aren't they cute? <laughs> Showing right along. People watch them right by the... Oh, they are nice. Now, <laughs> next day we take a... That day we take a... Before we get home, we went around, did some more sightseeing, and then come the day that we used to go home, the next day, and we stopped down to the, where we let Bingo, a dog, run, and uh, <laughs> cross the road. It's a vacant lot. And uh, right there was those sailboats again. So I got the camera out and took the pictures. The road is in between, cars are scooting back and forth in between us, but they're up closer to shore and I get a picture of those sailboats <coughs> right past those trees. <coughs> Put the telephoto lens on and brings them right up. Real pretty. Isn't that nice? I don't know whether they're racing again or whether they're just having fun, but anyway, it's all fun anyhow to watch them. Now we get back home and Bingo and I, we go to work right away, of course, and Bingo comes running from, from out where she's been exploring. I've been picking up scrap metal, and I call to her, and she comes on the first call. All I do is the first call, she'll come around and get in the car, and then we go. We take some scrap down to the scrap yard, and we see this fellow with this machine, he's stacking those cars up, just like you'd stack dominoes or something, or blocks. And uh, we thought that was interesting, so we took some pictures of it. Then we go down to the foundry, take some of our stuff down there. It's where we sell some of our stuff down to the foundry, and we watch them pour those that molten, molten iron into the molds. Now these molds are made; uh, they make great big heavy, heavy counterweights for uh, for lift trucks, for forklifts, and the like. That's what they that's what they make mostly down here. And those, well, they put 
several tons in each weight, some of them. And they poured it down in a little hole, but they put an awful lot of buckets full in one, in one mold. And they get one bucket full and they move to another one. And right behind there, there's a train wreck. It's not the passenger train we saw, but it's, it's a freight train. And somebody was careless on this, in loading one of those cars with some steel beams and they had it lopsided and it, they went around this curve and it tipped over and it just, it made all the other cars, pardon me, wreck. And uh, so made all that big mess there. Nobody was hurt on that one, but they could have been because people gathered around. Now people was hurt on this. This accident, somebody was careless and reckless. This is a, a road intersection that was clear everywhere you look. And there was no reason why people should hit each other on it. But somebody, I wouldn't be surprised what they were drunk, that they had been, or perhaps they were on drugs. But anyway, somebody came recklessly driving fast and run into somebody else. And uh, the Hamlets already had them gone when we happened to arrive on the scene. But by the looks of the, now the trouble with accidents is the innocent people get hit, get hurt, children as well as uh, adults. Innocent people get hurt and and killed. And so we should be careful, not only for our own use, for our own good, but for other people too, that we don't hurt them. Whatever you do, driving a car, riding a bicycle, anything, be careful. Be careful of your life because it is precious. And the lives that you might take of other people is precious, not only in God's sight, but also in their family. Now here's a lady who was killed in this accident. This is another another place and uh, she why she ran in front of that train or not I don't know but she a lady was killed in there but and you can get hurt with swings you can, a lot of people kids can get killed with swings they get come running behind this swing and it hits them in the head and not only can hurt them bad but can kill them so be careful whatever you do you get yourself hurt you hurt not only yourself but you hurt your family and everyone that loves you and you hurt God because God loves you and he has a wonderful plan for your life and your plan <coughs> may be well whatever your the plan he has for your life nobody else can fill in it's the most important job that there is that you can do and this little girl is she's doing part of her plan for God that God has for her life she's making some cupcakes for a party <coughs> and she's doing it very nicely and the, and very cute, Oh, She dropped it, made a mistake, she picks it up and starts right in again. She did cry, <laughs> makes the best of it. And smiles, look at there. <laughs> Isn't that cute? And she cleans up off the table, don't want to waste it either, put that back on. Put it on thick, it looks good, doesn't it? Got some on her finger, we'll clean that off. Keep it sanitary. And here's a party. Look, here is a, here's a Halloween party. A Halloween party is, I'm picking up these kids with the, with the bus for Halloween, and we're gonna take them out in the country to a farm, out on a barn. In a barn is a good place to have a, have a Halloween party, where you can sit on the hay and, and everything. And they're piling out, some of them with their own faces, and some of them with with other faces on. And they sit on bales of hay around the circle and, and show off their costumes, play games, have lots of fun. Now Halloween, it, this is the way that there's one with their own face. Halloween, if you go do go tr trick or treating, which you should do, do it in the daylight. Do it before it gets dark if you can't, or possibly can because in the darkness, even if you don't have a mask on, and can, eh, look, cats. Cats are just the thing to have at a Halloween party, especially in the barn, they belong there. And the boy's caught two of them. He's got two of them in his arms. They're not scared now. And they're wrapping this girl up. I don't know what for, what that game is. Perhaps you know. Here comes some more customers. All dressed up. Cuss it up. They get the game over with and she tears the paper off. Isn't that cute? <laughs> Look at that set of teeth. 
that nice? Now they're doing a lot of jitting around. They, eh, they scared the cats. <laughs> and this lady.